Madara Uchiha's Abilities from Naruto Madara Uchiha was the legendary leader of the Uchiha clan. He founded Konohagakure alongside his childhood friend and rival, Hashirama Senju, with the intention of beginning an era of peace. When the two couldn't agree on how to achieve that peace, they fought for control of the village, a conflict which ended in Madara's death. Madara, however, rewrote his death and went into hiding to work on his own plans. Unable to complete them in his natural life, he entrusted his knowledge and plans to Obito shortly before his actual death. Years later, Madara would be revived, only to see his plans foiled and ultimately realizing the error of his ways and making amends with Hashirama before his final death. Welcome to the Imagi! In today's video, we're going over Madara Uchiha's abilities. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amangi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Madara was one of the most powerful shinobi in history, recognized as the strongest Uchiha in his lifetime and for decades after his death. A child prodigy, he killed several adult Senju before he had awakened his Sharingan. History remembers him as the only one able to compete with Hashirama Senju, a god of shinobi, and he pushed him to his absolute limits. When Obito operated under Madara's name, fear of Madara's power forced the five great shinobi countries and the neutral land of iron to band together and trigger the fourth shinobi world war, as it was noted Madara's name itself was power. After his return from death and various enhancements, Madara was able to decisively defeat thousands of shinobi, the five kage, and the nine-tailed beasts, all at once, respectively. Chakra and Physical Prowess Even by Uchiha standards, Madara was born with very powerful chakra, described as very foul and evil. This is partly because he inherited Indra's chakra. His large chakra reserves allowed him to fight non-stop for 24 hours before collapsing and in his old age, summoned the demonic statue of the Outer Path from its cage in the moon. His chakra control could perform complicated techniques with a single hand seal. He could also quickly absorb and synchronize Senjutsu chakra with his own and therefore enter Sage Mode, despite having no prior training in Senjutsu. Even when distributing his chakra among 25 wood clones, each still had enough power to threaten the five Kage. Madara was incredibly skilled in Taijutsu. During his confrontation with the 4th Division, he calmly defeated thousands of opponents with physical combat, disarming and dodging attacks from many directions. He could strike with precision before his opponent could react, and overpower individuals twice his size. He was fast enough to attack Naruto who was in Sage Mode, and dodge a Flying Thunder God Slash via his own sensing abilities, combined with sensing abilities that Sage Mode provides. While using Sage Mode, Madara's pain tolerance was high, as he neither flinched from Sasuke stabbing his right arm, the Tailed Beast's assault, nor from the loss of his arm. Body Modifications When Madara was reincarnated, Kabuto Yakushi modified him to be beyond his physical and combat prime. He was restored to his physical prime, and physically more capable than ever, while also retaining the abilities he only had in his old age. In addition, a pale replica of Hashirama's face existed on Madara's left pectoral region, which acted as a medium to channel Senjutsu Chakra into Sage Mode. It also let him heal most of his injuries in seconds, and allows him the usage of wood release. For severe injuries he could not heal, like amputation, Madara would replace his limb with material from a white Zetsu body. Stemming from having Hashirama's cells in his body, Madara's life force became powerful enough to not immediately die from having all the tailed beasts extracted from his body. Ninjutsu Madara was well versed in a variety of ninjutsu styles. He could use Juinjutsu powerful enough to restrict the target's actions, hide within surfaces to avoid damage, and traverse the battlefield unnoticed, and through an unorthodox use of the Shadow Clone technique, fake his death by having a clone act as his corpse. In the anime, Madara showed the ability to levitate. Madara was an adept sensor, being able to detect others' chakra signatures countries away, determine a person's clan and the nature of their Kekai Genkai, and even differentiate species. When amplified by Sage Mode, he could even fight whilst blind by locating targets and dodging attacks through his sensory perception. Bukijutsu Madara could fight using many weapons, such as giant shuriken, a kama, chains with weights, a kusarigama, and handheld shuriken. He also demonstrated proficiency with swords while fighting the 4th Division. His trademark weapon was his gunbai, with which he could shield himself and redirect attacks, or wield it like a mace or flail. He could slice through the giant roots of the Ten Tails tree form with it. Nature Transformation 
Madara was able to utilize all five basic nature transformations as well as yin yang release. And Uchiha, he had a natural affinity for fire release, being able to produce a massive wall of flames that required several water release users to repel together, launch a volley of dragon shaped fireballs, or cover an area with ash to act as a smokescreen. In the anime, Madara could create powerful gusts with his gun by to repel an entire platoon. Later in his life, he used Yin Yang Release to amplify White Zetsu and pour his will into black receivers which could restrict and control targets. After transplanting Hashirama's DNA, which was later augmented further by Kabuto, Madara could then use Wood Release, a mixture of water and earth natured chakra, with his skill being comparable to Hashirama himself. He could create gigantic flowering trees that would render a foe unconscious, wood clones and wood dragons that could bind targets and drain their chakra. With Hashirama's cells, Madara could also produce roots to connect to and gain limited control of the Tentails. Despite the wood release's power, Madara does not seem to use it unless he is either toying with his opponent or if he needs it as a last resort to restrain a tailed beast. After becoming the Tentails Jinchuriki, he was shown using Yin release to create lightning bolts, and Storm release, a mixture of water and lightning natured chakra to create energy beams that could cut through these six paths rods. Sharingan Madara awakened his Sharingan as a child, with one Tomoe in each of his eyes. By adulthood, his Sharingan was fully developed and active near constantly. Madara's mastery over the Sharingan surpassed every other member of the Uchiha clan in his natural lifetime. Only he could tell the difference between a Shadow or Wood clone and the original. With brief eye contact, Madara could place targets under Genjutsu and paralyze them or relay information. He could even trap the Ninetales and summon it as a powerful tool in battle. By programming one of his eyes to activate Izanagi after his death, he was able to alter reality and resurrect himself. Mangekyo Sharingan Madara and his brother Izuna were the first Uchiha known to have awakened the Mangekyo Sharingan. Madara knew about other users' Mangekyo techniques and was also capable of discerning the mechanics of these techniques with brief observation. After stealing Kakashi Hatake's Mangekyo Sharingan, he was able to use Kamui on himself immediately. With his eyesight deteriorating from overuse, he replaced his original eyes with Izuna's, restoring his vision and gaining the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. The straight Tomoe of his Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan granted him fluidity in his movements while fighting. Having awakened both his Mangekyo, Madara could use Susano, which he could use even without his eyes in their sockets. The ribcage could withstand an ultra big ball Rasengan and A's strength, and he could produce a legged humanoid Susano. His Susano wielded two to four undulating blades that could be thrown and controlled remotely. He could also fire Yasaka Magatama of various sizes. When fully produced, Madara would hover inside Susano to grant him a greater range of movement. After acquiring the Eterna Mangekyo Sharingan, Madara could stabilize Susano into complete body form, causing it to resemble a Tengu with outer armor that was nearly impenetrable. A secondary pair of arms wielded sheathed katana, which could bisect mountains with their mere shockwaves. According to himself, its power was comparable to that of the tailed beasts, and no one was said to have lived to see it a second time. Madara's complete body Susano uses its secondary set of arms for attack and defense rather than flight. He was also able to shape his Susano into an armor for Kurama, which synergized their abilities. Rinnegan Years after infusing himself with Hashirama's DNA and unknowingly mixing Indra's and Asura's chakra, Madara's Sharingan evolved into the Rinnegan. As the eye's original owner, only he could use them to their maximum power. He was able to switch between both dojutsu. With the Rinnegan, Madara could use all of the abilities of the Six Paths technique, such as the Preta Path to absorb chakra and the Diva Path to perform Chibaku Tensei. He could also use the Outer Path to create chakra chains that could restrain all nine-tailed beasts and black receivers for various melee and supplementary purposes. Through the usage of his Rinnegan with that of his Sharingan, Madara could summon meteorites to cause widespread destruction. While under the impure world reincarnation, Madara was unable to use the full extent of his Rinnegan's abilities. After being revived and obtaining one of his actual eyes, he could summon and control the demonic statue of the Outer Path, seal the ten tails inside himself, and generate a corporeal invisible shadow to aid him in battle. While Madara was in Sage Mode and further boosted by Kurama's Chakra, this shadow was powerful enough to knock down the Tailed Beasts. With access to both of his Rinnegan, Madara could produce at least four shadows to aid him. Rinne Sharingan 
As the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, and with both of his Rinnegan, Madara approached the moon and awakened a Rinne Sharingan on his forehead, which he could use to reflect the Eye of the Moon, allowing him to cast the infinite Tsukiyomi and trap everyone besides him in a Genjutsu. Jinchuriki Transformations After sealing the Ten Tails into his body, Madara had immediately gained complete control over the beast, which was stronger than when it was first revived due to having all of the Eight Tails and half of the Nine Tails sealed into it leading to his power being noted to feel stronger than Obito's, which only had a portion of the Eight and Nine Tails Chakra. As such, only Shinobi using all of the Eight Gates or the Six Paths Chakra are able to compete with him. In this form, Madara could fly, and his physical abilities were enhanced, being fast enough to react to the Flying Thunder God technique and Kamui, and durable enough to survive the Night Guy, albeit barely. After absorbing the tree form of the Ten Tails, his regenerative powers could circumvent bisection and restore his body, causing him to declare himself immortal. He could also harness natural energy to enhance his various techniques, as well as cast the infinite Tsukiyomi and God, nativity of a world of trees, after he awakened the Rinne Sharingan. With his transformation, Madara obtained truth-seeking balls that floated behind him in a circular formation, which were compromised of the five basic nature transformations and yin-yang release. Their chakra is highly malleable and versatile, such that he could use them as high-speed projectiles, protective barriers, and various weapons, such as a shakujo. With yin-yang release, the balls could nullify all ninjutsu they came into contact with. Intelligence Madara's years of experience on the battlefield honed his strategic ingenuity. He could quickly devise a number of approaches and switch approaches immediately. The longer he spent against a particular opponent, the less he needed backup tactics, as he could eventually predict what they would do and identify a literal or psychological weaknesses to exploit. He could form and verify any theories that he comes up with using small details. In addition to his sheer adaptability, Madara was knowledgeable on a large variety of individuals and abilities, and thus could identify techniques when used and react with the most appropriate counter to them. Likewise, Madara was an excellent teacher, having single-handedly trained the young Obito into a powerful shinobi comparable to himself. A researcher, he experimented on and cultivated a clone flower through the demonic statue of the Outer Path, and from it, he created a life support system for himself. He had enough medical knowledge to transplant eyes, treat severe injuries, and could replace destroyed body parts with white zetsu matter. Personality Madara's childhood was a product of the times he lived in. The constant fighting made him a perfectionist that would keep at something until he mastered it, and his triumphs on the battlefield made him very confident in his abilities and talent. Whenever one of these personality traits was challenged, as they tended to be by Hashirama, Madara's competitive streak would emerge. Madara did not mind Hashirama's influence in this regard. He believed the only way to survive in the shinobi world was to make allies with one's enemies. His exposure to Hashirama is credited for Madara not experiencing the Uchiha's curse of hatred, or at the very least, not being victimized by it as much as Izuna was. And even though he claimed to have abandoned his friendship with Hashirama, Madara still held onto their friendship subconsciously. Madara's actions and beliefs were singularly focused on protecting Izuna, his only surviving brother. So long as he had Izuna, Madara was reasonable and kind, willing to make concessions for a perceived greater good. Madara changed after Izuna's death, becoming bitter towards the Senju, particularly Hashirama since he still had a brother. Embracing his clan's curse of hatred, he opted to die for revenge rather than compromise or forgive. Although he was briefly convinced to set aside his grief and try to replace Izuna with the collective family of Konoha, he could never shake the feeling that he was betraying Izuna's memory. The increasing isolation of himself and other Uchiha from village politics ultimately convinced him of this, causing him to fully break with any other attachments. During his time as a Konoha shinobi, Madara did what he thought was in the village's best interests. Unlike Hashirama's compassionate methods, Madara took a merciless approach. The shinobi of Iwagakure only had purpose so long as they swore unwavering allegiance to Konoha. Since their methods were so different, Madara hated to hear Hashirama's name during diplomatic discussions. After his defection from Konoha, Madara's priorities became centered around the Eye of the Moon plan, manipulating countless others in order to satisfy his own goals, and putting in place multiple layers of contingencies so that nobody could ever diverge from his own intentions. Despite this, Madara genuinely believed the plan would in fact benefit the world and simply followed an ends justify the means principle. As he valued only power and possessed so much of it, Madara therefore disliked to waste it on unworthy causes or unchallenging opponents, claiming disgust when he was forced to. Madara loved fighting above all else, the sights, the sounds, even the taste of his own blood. 
He felt being reincarnated deprived him of the full experience. Yet he was very disciplined in a fight, never allowing his failed plans or attacks to upset him, never letting superior numbers or power intimidate him, and always willing to do whatever must be done to gain victory. Although he sometimes imposed limitations on himself, such as not using certain techniques more than once, he was willing to lower himself with unbecoming tactics or excessive displays in order to change tactics and exploit advantages. He was perfectly aware of his talents and did not feign modesty, bluntly stating when he was stronger than his opponents and belittling them when they continued to defy him. Conversely, if he was proven wrong or somebody posed a legitimate challenge to him, he would admit it and apologize for previous remarks if necessary. In addition, if such an opponent is about to die, he would show them the ultimate respect by taking the time and effort to finish them off himself, even if said person would die on their own. Stemming from this, he feels insulted if he knows that an opponent isn't using their full power against him, even if he knows it will result in their death. He also held the Senju to a higher standard in terms of power due to his encounters with Hashirama, stating a weak Senju disgusts him more than a weak shinobi of any kind. One of the exceptions Madara makes was Hashirama. Their years of rivalry left Madara with competing feelings of respect and resentment for Hashirama. Madara considered Hashirama the only opponent worthy of his time and would postpone his own plans if it meant prolonging his time to fight with Hashirama without issue. Despite this, Madara is quite open-minded about recognizing other strong individuals besides Hashirama, as when he declares Might Guy as the strongest taijutsu user he's ever faced. Despite his prowess and intellect, Madara is not without moments of recklessness. When he was brought back to life, he showed no hesitation in absorbing Hashirama's Senjutsu Chakra, while admitting he expected to have some difficulty controlling it due to having no prior training. In the later years of his developing the Eye of the Moon plan, Madara became pessimistic about human nature, believing the cycle of battle to be inescapable. He also came to believe that humanity and the world are incapable of changing from what they were in the past. He believed the current worthless reality was built too much on the idea of winning and losing. For this reason, he was deeply committed to his plan, so much so that he would prematurely end a fight he was enjoying or kill any threat, even reluctantly his own clansmen, for the sake of its success. Despite this, Madara was simply acting on what he believed would benefit humanity as a whole, showing his time in Konoha did indeed influence his actions, and he wasn't acting simply out of bloodlust after Izuna's death. His plan's ultimate failure deeply depressed Madara, but it made him see his errors. Breaking free of his curse of hatred, he regretted the mistakes he had made and admitted the superiority of Hashirama's methods for peace. He and Hashirama were thus able to reconcile their friendship in the moments just before death. For all his ruthless and manipulative nature, Hashirama stated that Madara is still a kind man at his core. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.